So my name is Eduardo, and today we're going to talk about this this new addition to interacting with flight. This thing that we we deemed um, to call script mode, or it, it's basically a new sub command to the Py flight um, CLI. Quick agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about like what is this command, some of the features that we implemented, some of the pitch work that we're planning, and you know, open for open up for a Q and A real quick. So why a new command? Um, feedback. Time and time again, you know, we listen from multiple people that, especially like when you're getting started, like flight is really hard to use. Um, so we devised this, this new command, run, AKA script mode. It, it lets you run a specific, like a single file. If your file contains your, all your tests or your workflows, you're good, you're good to go to use um, PyFlight run. The rest of the options are not super important. We're gonna dive into some of those throughout the presentation. So compared to how we asked users to interact with the system at the beginning, how do you even run a workflow to begin with? It's this five-step process, right? You have to build an image, you have to package your code, you have to register it, and finally you schedule it using, you know, the UI with Flight Console or CLI via Flight CLI or CTL, or you can use a programmatic access via flight remote API. Finally, you get something to, you know, that executes on a flight cluster. So we compare this to how you actually run using PyFlight Run. It's a single command. It encapsulates all these, these steps in a single command. You do PyFlight Run dash dash remote to indicate that you want to run it on a remote um, flight deployment. A file name that contains your workflow space and then your workflow and then you can pass the parameters through the cli and that in itself is, is, is an interesting problem that we're going to talk a little bit about obviously um in order to to do this by flight run has to be extremely opinionated about some of the stuff that you have to provide when you when you use like the, the regular way of of um registering packaging your code for example um here in in, in the, these um, brackets, you can see that you have to provide an image and you have to provide a version to actually like tie things together, right? And in PyFlight Run, um, we kind of cheat a little bit because we provide a bunch of images that are pre-built. So we don't have to worry about like the first step, which is building an image. Um, we package the code using um, fast registration. I think we already talked about fast registration here. Folks are not using it, they should use it more. PyFlight Run makes heavy use of fast registration. Um, the version is another parameter that we ask from the users. Um, now we derive the version from the code itself. So we hash it and use like a bunch of parameters around that. But like you, it's another parameter that you don't have to worry about. Um, as I mentioned again or already, uh, the, the code has to live in a single file. All the tests and workflows that you are registering using PyFlight Run they have to live in a single file. Obviously, if you already have like tasks and um, other things that you're referencing in your workflow, like they, they can, and they are already registered, feel free, but like simplify to use. If everything lives in a single file, you're good to go. As already touched on, um, workflow and task parameters which can be passed from the, the CLI. And, um, you can use this the same um, UX, like it's the same command to run either locally or or in a or remotely, which it, it helps you know in in the iteration. But um, let's talk about some of the features. PyFlight Run has a wide support for for input types. We're gonna dive into like some of those in in a bit. Um, you can run from anywhere. That's also another. Um, cool feature that that we implemented. Like sometimes you don't want to be close to the file that you're going to be executing. You can actually point to that file from anywhere in the in the file system. Um, the help um, text is generated on the fly, so it's self-describing. It lets you know what are the types and the names of the workflow parameters, so that you don't have to like switch between your editor and, and like the CLI when you're running, um, when you're about to run a workflow. And um, we also like provide 
you know, a very simple way to like, yeah. We we'll provide you with a snippet that lets you access the result of your execution programmatically using Flight Remote. Let's go over um, each one of those. Uh, as I mentioned, wide support for for input types. As you all know, Flight has um, a type system. So PyFlight Run supports all the simple types, and that includes ints, floats, uh, strings, booleans, duration, and date time. You can also pass um, lists, dictionaries, data classes in pandas data frames you, you have to ask like how, how do you pass a data frame from the cli so we made this conscious decision um as long as the 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 format of the data frame is a parquet file and it's a file in your local file system you're good to go so let's take a quick look can you guys see my screen still yes yes great amazing okay so is the the font size, okay. Thank I can you very increase much. this a little bit. Is it better now? I'll go with this. Better for the code. Yeah, not for the CLI. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll increase the font on the CLI later. Um, so let's talk about the code real quick. On the right-hand side, we have this very simple workflow. Um, we take you know a bunch of parameters like int, strings, lists, dictionaries, data class, and a pandas data frame. And I'm not doing much. I'm just like printing each one of this. So like all the tasks here, they just print the, the actual inputs. But again, this could be more complicated, right? Um, worth noting here how the data class looks like. It has only two fields, an internet and a string. Now let's take a look at how we can actually run this in the CLI. So you do like pipe pipe run. It's, is, it, is that okay? Font size, maybe a little bit more. More zoom in. Okay. Oh, I guess that's the. Is it better now? Oh my god, this looks horrendous. <laughs> we uh, let's parse this real quick. So, by flight run dash dash remote, as I said, and then I'm pointing to a file like to this file that we just described, like the one that describes the, the workflow. Um, notice how I'm naming the workflow here, which is the, the exact name of the the workflow um functional definition, and then I'm passing the parameters. So we have an int. A string, a list. You see how the list is is, is described? Like it. we're just using like a, a JSON format. A dictionary, which is you know, just like a simple um, dictionary in, in in JSON format. Same with data classes. So I think this one is interesting. And finally, the the last parameter, the data frame. So um, parquet tests is a file in my my local file system. I'm just doing you know pointing to it and Lo and behold, after you run it, you get uh, a link to the flight console with your execution. Um, let's wait, why this didn't open? Yes, that's one. Let's try this again. Yeah, see, like you don't, you don't have to like remember any execution ID, you don't have to like to type anything. You get a, a URL with that points to the actual execution. Um, uh, let's keep going. Run from anywhere. That's also um, another feature, real quick. So I keep it clean. So take a look at my my example here. I have uh, a folder structure that, like, especially in the in the nested case, I have like a, a directory called nested that has a subdirectory called workflows and another called directory and finally inside of that i have my example.py so let's open um example.py nested workflows directory simple again not oh my god why not doing a lot but hey, um, um sorry can you can you zoom in more on the cli side of things thanks oh, really uh yeah how about now is it better it looks much better amazing cool um what else? yeah so we're trying to run this workflow that sits inside like a three level deep um hierarchy right so um my flight nested so this thing takes a single parameter so I'm 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 sitting at the root of the of the of the project now. 
see how I'm pointing to it using like the relative pass of nested workflows directory and then examples.py. But um, so it ran. But if I go to nested workflows and I point to it, oh, I guess I'm missing uh, directory here. It also works. So run from anywhere. You can even be outside your project. It would do the right thing. Um, the way it does this is that it has this very, um, it, it's kind of a simplifying assumption, but like we we walk up the the folder structure trying to find the first directory that doesn't contain um, an init file. That's what we consider the, the, the root of the project. Um, workflows and tasks. You know, I, the, the two examples that I ran are just like workflows, but it works the same way with, with tasks. Um, the self-describing help of that, that one is, is an interesting one. So um, let's use this example that we just ran. So if we do five flight remote um, and workflow dash dash help, you see we have a parameter called MSG that is required, that, that is a hint that you have like um, default values for parameters too. So for example, if I did, I don't know, ABC. Now we see like it, it's no longer required and it tells you, hey, you have a default value for ABC. So that works across all the, per, the, the input types. And finally we have, programmatic access to the execution snippet. Um, I'm not going to demo this, but it works by passing this extra flag called that dash dash dump snippet. Um, notice how we emit this, this small you know, Python code that lets you using flight remote investigate and like inspect the results of, you, of the execution. This is good for, this is amazing actually for like these, these more interactive environments like, like Jupyter and like stuff like that. Um, future work, we want to support uh, multiple workflows and definitions seen in like different files. Um, thinking about, you know, adding auto completion of inputs so that you can actually, you know, just like tag all your way, <laughs> all the way to, to the execution of, of, of the workflow. Um, we have, even though I claim that we have a wide support of input types, um, we can always do more, you know? There are some types that like people are interested, like the, the, the support for data frames is, is kind of limited. We, we only allow for pandas data frames using Parquet right now. And um, we only have basic images that contain like flight gate installed in like very few um, like libraries. So we want to also offer um, other images like, you know, so, so, so that we can allow people to run PyTorch TensorFlow and like other more complex, um, initial workflows and with that how i open for questions and yeah does anyone have any question hey eduardo this was a wonderful demo really exciting stuff um i may have missed this earlier so apologies but is this um is it possible to use a uh, custom image for these like if we have an internal image that's like an internal registry somewhere yes yes um, I, I skimmed over it, but one of the parameters to pipe flight run is actual, actually dash dash image. Ah, so you can pass perfect. like multiple images, but yes. Okay, wonderful, makes sense. Yeah, um, firstly, can I put a meta comment in here? I love the uh, interaction and thank you, Eduardo, for making it energetic. This is awesome. Everybody is evolving. Thank you for all the chats and comments. It really helps us, makes us feel that we are doing the right thing too. Thank you. Can I ask one question? Go for it. Um, curious if you have thoughts on how you can signal to the user like what's happening post submit. Um, like right now, you're just including a URL, but wondering if we want some sort of like a wait and exit after some event or something like that. Interesting. Can you say a bit more? Yeah, so like imagine you have a lightweight first task that does some validation of inputs beyond what you can do with just the type system. Um, how could like spec validation for like ML purposes, um, 
How could you potentially do that spec validation? Wait until that spec validation happens on remote before actually exiting with you know exit code zero. Got it. Yeah, no. That's no, we haven't thought about it. That's that's a great use case. I'll you know make an issue of it. That's amazing. Thanks. Greg, can you make an issue? Yeah. And also content. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, of course. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, hey, Eduardo. What's up? Um, when are we going to be able to run this on a directory? Multiple scripts. Wait, you want to run workflows pointing to a directory? Is, is that what you're asking? Uh, I want then workflows and tasks just in multiple my, files. That's what you yeah, say. My oh, in multiple code. files. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. We... Yeah, uh, this is not coming the next release, but it's something that we're actively working on. I, I think it's an important thing, Eduardo, that probably we did not touch is the mechanics of wow, how the fast registration is working underneath. Um, just for folks who are interested in the guts, and I think we should talk about the guts here sometime. So uh, this is utilizes 1.0's new support for signed URLs underneath. Uh, that means the code is getting fast serialized and uploaded, uh, and all of that is happening through the uh, assigned URL that's getting sent by admin. So the u the user does not need special permissions to write to S3, GCS, etc. It's all handled by the admin uh, service itself. And uh, we wanted to have a unique version and so on, and that's why we decided to use one single file. Now doing multiple files is absolutely possible. It's just that it's more work. We wanted to get this one streamlined use case going and and get that, you know, evangelize that and see how people like about it. And we and, and we formally also wanted to update the getting started. Right? That's really was also the, the goal of this. But you know, we realized that this is super powerful. Multiple files is required. Yes, couldn't agree more. <laughs> Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here is since we have this new way of running scripts, um, I don't know how people interact with flight snacks or like the user guide and the examples, but um, we're working on a thing that you can kind of just download the Python file and then PyFlight run it, you know, um, with some commands there. So it's like super easy to interact with the, the examples instead of just reading it. Yeah, we've tried to make all flight snacks work with my flight run. There are a couple still that don't work. Oh, and by the way, uh, this should work across any custom images. So for example, in Spark, you want to have a custom image, you should be able to use hyphen hyphen image. And we do publish these images for flight snacks. Same thing for distributed training, same thing for uh, specific GPU specific images. Um, and to be honest, they don't even need to have the code in them. That's why that's what Eduardo was saying. That we we were we are thinking of publishing stock images. Now the problem is, I think maintaining stock images is extremely hard, and that's where we need community support. Would be really really fantastic. So. Nice. Um, if you have more questions, please feel free to you know reach out. Um, we are super pumped about this feature, and we are going to lean on it, so to speak. <laughs>